First Corinthians chapter 15, and I'll close with this. This will be my first closing. <laughs> first Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, just like those pillars we are talking about. All the things that can be shaken will get shaken, the Bible says. But there's some things in our life that need to be immovable. And it's our faith in Jesus Christ. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's our key to abundance. You want prosperity, you want abundant living? Abound in the work of the Lord. Abound. Find ways to serve Him. Make up new ways to serve Him. <laughs> Get out there where the people are and let them see Jesus through you. Abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Everything that you do in the name of Jesus, everything that you do to show His love and His life to people, Everything you do to redeem people back to God. Everything you do to serve as an ambassador of Jesus Christ in your world. It will not come back empty. It won't return void. It will produce fruit. It will produce life. Know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So how many want to walk stoked? I, I believe you've been inspired today. The truth inspires us. How many want to walk straight? Godly, holy conduct. Being unstained from the world. We're in the world, but not of it. Yeah. We don't have that same smell. We don't run in the same way. We don't walk in the same places that we used to walk in. There's a difference in our life Thank from you, what Lord. we used to be Thank you, Lord. to who we are today because of what Jesus did in us. Amen. And how many want to walk steady with a, a firm, even pace, yes, knowing, knowing that your labor is not in vain? Yes, Lord. I just want to quickly address something. Some of you probably have looked at what you could call the, the, the prosperity of those that don't serve God. It really isn't true prosperity, but you, you look at maybe they got the nice car, the nice house, you know, nice clothes, whatever you want to want to consider. And it's easy to, with a natural eye, the natural mind to look at that and, and question and wonder, well, how come I'm serving God? <coughs> And they're doing better than me. Well, the truth of the matter is they're really not doing better than you. And it's all going to come crashing down sooner or later. Probably sooner than later. And there'll be an account. We'll have to render accounts with God. And you're on a firm footing. So instead of jealousy, let that provoke compassion in you. Compassion to reach people that are not serving God. Because the, the scales will be tipped. The scenario is going to turn around sooner or later. And you will see that it is not in vain that you served God. It's not in vain that you followed Christ. That you left everything to follow Him. The disciples said, look Lord, we left everything and we followed you. And Jesus said, yeah, you're going to have with the persecutions, but you're going to have a hundred times more of everything that you gave up in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. That's good news. So never, ever question why, why is it going so good for them and I'm serving God and they're not. You serve God. You be steadfast, just like Paul talked about. 1 Corinthians, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain right. in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads for a minute. Thank you, Lord. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't at least 
find out or ask if maybe there's someone in here that has not made Jesus the Lord of their life. And also by internet, people that may be listening to this recording, watching this recording later. If you're here today or if you're listening to this message and you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to do that today, you've heard about this life-giving Savior and you want to receive Him and you want your life to be transformed and you want to receive a miracle in your life. Yeah. Just If you're here today, just slip your hand up where I can see it and we'll pray a prayer for those that may be listening to this recording at a later time. But let's say this prayer, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. You're the Savior of the world. You are the Savior of the world. And you're my Savior. You're my Savior. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. I say you are Lord. I say you are Lord. Lord of my life. Lord of my life. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. Things known and unknown. Things known and unknown. I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood, your precious blood, pure blood that was shed for me. I receive your sacrifice, and I know that you are not dead, but that according to the Bible, you raised from the dead, and you're alive today. You've got power to change lives, to transform people. And you're changing and transforming me now. I'm a new person. My old life is gone. All things are new. Because of you. I thank you for it now. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.